I'm happy to do these sonatas because they've been something, uh, they've been present in my life since I was very young. And so it has a kind of a personal, per personal sentimental journey. It's like a touchstone, as, as we mm -hmm. say, you know, it's something, it's a constant in one's life as the rest of one's life changes completely. So much of the sonatas are uh, so lyrical in character. Mm -hmm. We always think of Brahms as this big yeah, you romantic think of composer, yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. and uh, there's a, certainly his climax, but he draws it, um, so and he sort of uh, distributes the climax. So in Sonata's, it's actually very interesting to try to find the the synopsis and the and the narrative in this Sonata's. Brahms himself talk about nostalgia in his in his work. That mixture, kind of, of brain and heart, I find is, is something that I particularly appreciate in this in this repertoire personally. G major sonata has a distinct sort of nostalgic character, which comes to, through the link of him quoting his own song, the Regenlied, in the in the sonata, and the, and the song talks about how the rain brings back memories from childhood. The, the second movement. Uh, is this sort of all, almost spiritual, very um, somber, sincere movement, which then comes back in the finale, uh, in the middle of this melancholic song. But then, of course, there's the D minor sonata, which, uh, sonata, which is probably his darkest work. Mm -hmm. It's almost this sort of Beethoven, uh, very driven, kind of extremely dark drama mm -hmm. that ends in in total total catastrophe kind of mood. <laughs> um, it's an it's certainly an interesting progression from the, as you say, the nostalgic kind of peaceful. The, the G major for me, I don't know for reason, for some reason, it always made me think of taking a walk in the woods. I don't know. I, a lot of things in life for me come back to, the, to that mm -hmm. kind of natural. Surrounding then the the warmth of the A major sonata, just the key itself. But from the A major to the D minor, such a huge leap in in, in personal where where he was. It's uh, quite amazing. It's an interesting uh, journey that Brahms goes through. Each sonata also has its sort of minor minor section, which is uh, some kind of a challenge, represents some kind of challenge or distress or. Or, or some certainly some tension, but uh, the main uh, character or the main color of each sonata is, is very very different. It's almost like three different painters um, talking about or, or describing describing similar but different events. It's remarkable how, how different the third sonata is from the first one. It's just in a completely different uh, emotional space. It's um, it's agitated but but quiet, um, worried. It's like somebody kind of kneading their hands, you know, sweaty palms a little bit. Um, the middle movements are a complete contrast to that. Um, there's this, this beautiful, simple song essentially uh, in, in the second movement. The third movement is an interesting transition because of uh, it's a scherzo, but with a very sad kind of tinge to it. Uh, it's uh, an interesting transition to the last movement then, which is violent. The music, it's, it's, it is yeah. kind of an eternal flame. I mean, it's something that has to be kept alive from generation to generation, and this this aspect that in playing it we are having a conversation across decades, across mm -hmm. centuries, to me that is a, that's one of the most magical things about making mm -hmm. classical music, mm -hmm. is that sense of we are conversing with mm -hmm. these composers long past, with the performers who preceded us, and hopefully also with the performers to follow mm -hmm. us.